Come on a trip with me, ladies and gentlemen. Travel with me back to the Harlem of 40 years ago, and you will see why Harlem is such a legend. Letter writing was a big thing to him. He loved getting them, and he loved sending them to us. When you got a letter from him or a package from him, I mean, you just, you know, you just want to open it because you never knew what was in it. <laughs> now, here are two of my friends from the gay community. They're showing off their nice hairstyles. I don't know where these fellas are now. They live life in the fast lane. Men were looking different. They were acting different. Videos were different. You had the really heavy eyeliners and things like that. And then he started sending us photos from the jewel box of these men in drag. And we were like, oh, you know, he must really be, you know, in touch. <laughs> he took photographs of people who were participating in the jewel box review, which was a traveling review show, a drag show that was integrated, it was the first one to be integrated, and they actually performed to integrated audiences. And in addition to photographs, montages, and collages, uh, Anderson also shot about an hour's worth of eight millimeter home movies, including this footage of a drag ball at the Rockland Palace Ballroom, uh, circa 1953, 1954. I'm taking you to the Impersonators Ball at Rockland Palace. It was the most fabulous affair of all time. I used to take pictures there every year, and uh, I had a priceless collection. And it's a, it's a slice of Americana, and it used to draw people from all around the world for that one night. Rockland Palace, they'd sell 6,000, 8,000 tickets yes. to those balls. No, absolutely. Because the Apollo did it, it, it gave it some officialness. The families are going. The families are helping to kind of move the needle forward about what's acceptable in a culture and what's not. That's when the homosexuals came out of the closet. They would buy minks and sables. They would have chauffeured limousines. And for that one night, they could shine and be themselves. And the next day, they would go back to their everyday world. We're talking about queerness that wasn't really out in the open the way we understand it or see it today. It's considered entertainment, which is the primary way in which people understand black queer culture in the first place. There's so much more to know about black queer culture, but drag has always been that moment. It may have been one of the first photos where I saw where it was drag, and I didn't really understand, like, I was like, drag? Like, where does that come into play? Um, especially during the time, and then I started seeing more and more. They're playful, they're behind the scenes. Yeah, Again, like you they, can they, tell. they, they speak to the access. People were comfortable around him. When you look at all these photos, you can see that he was kind, that he had to have had a very warm personality. People accepted him, and he accepted people. Part of why Anderson's collection is interesting because there aren't a lot of photos of the review from the audience's perspective. Right. These are the photos backstage. Right, right. So we're being taken behind the illusion of drag. And drag, you're supposed to come out in full drag, you know, the jewelry, the makeup, the gowns. And so I noticed that he paid subtle attention to the way someone was dressed. The camera would linger on the face for a moment and then kind of go down to show how beautiful the gown was, the silkiness. There were the poses and the sort of subtleness. I love it because it says something about Gordon Anderson's access. It says something about their level of being comfortable. There are very few films that kind of show this. It's unheard of. And it just intrigued me because it was like he was more than just a photographer. He was doing things that, I mean, have never been done. That's kind of revolutionary if you ask me. I remember him with fondness. First came out as a woman and then came back as a man. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, enjoy, enjoy. Entertainment is always, in some cases, kind of helping us think things through. When it comes to black people in this culture, it's one of the ways in which we've received respect and admiration. It's a performative thing, but there's so much more going on. Archives and museums are, you know, spoils 
of the empire. And so when you have things like this at the Apollo, it not only disrupts it, it makes it more authentic to the American experience. We have here something that we are benefiting from now by watching shows like RuPaul's Drag Race, Pose, and Legendary. These are the builders of that particular culture. Kind of changed my perspective on how I looked at him. He was free, like he was doing what he wanted, and he really played a big part in black history. Thank you.